good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good to see you guys on this morning. We're going to wait a few minutes to see if anyone else gets on and we'll get started. It is December 5th today and we don't have snow. How about that? Isn't that awesome? May get some later, but we don't have any yet. Had a good time yesterday. Even cleaning out gutters in December. Can you believe it? Awesome. Hmm. We'll give them one more minute here and we'll get started. Hope everyone is doing well. Hope everyone is healthy. And we, as we go into this winter season. So thankful for you all that's going to be joining me this morning. Well, I guess I'll start opening prayer this morning. And here we go. Father God, we thank you for allowing us to be in your presence again this morning to hear your word. And hopefully, Father God, that uh, the speaker will speak what you have given him and it will be received. We thank you for your goodness and your joy. And we thank you for Jesus most of all and his blood on the cross. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen and amen this morning. I'm glad to see you here. All right, let's get right into it. Shouldn't have, shouldn't be before you very long this morning, but who knows what the Lord's going to do. Amen. Only he knows what he's going to do. But sometimes he does let us in on some of his secrets. Amen. I have found uh, here recently as we have been enduring the last two years of being in the house that uh, you can find yourself in a position that you're just kind of all over the place. And the position I like to call it that you're all over the place in is drifting. You can find yourself, we have found, we, some of us can find ourselves just kind of, well, just doing our thing, doing a normal thing, what we think we should be doing and just living life. And hopefully we're living it unto the Lord. But, you know, drifting can be very easily, easily done if we're not staying close. We here in America seem to seek a lot of pleasure. We live for pleasure. We work for pleasure. We do everything so we can sit down somewhere, which is the exact opposite of what the Lord is telling us to do. The Lord is telling us to what? To go and make disciples. But we are seeking here in America many times to go and find somewhere to sit down. I don't know about you all, but when I was off last year for those eight months or so, and many of you have been working from home, I uh, obviously wore a lot of sweatpants. And uh, when we went back to uh, church, I found my suit did not fit. <laughs> it did not fit. And I found myself saying, what happened? I had drifted off and had added some extra pounds that I didn't realize. And my pants did not fit like they used to. Amen. See, sometimes when you're drifting, things will not fit like they used to. You can go and try to find that nice pair of pants or nice dress you had in the closet. And oh, oh my goodness, it's not the same anymore. 
So in the changing world, as, it, as we are looking at it continually changing, we have found ourselves not being able to do what we've always done the way we've always done. You know, it is okay to have uh, some pleasure. Pleasure is okay. Sometimes you do need to rest. It's okay to have a little time for yourself. Amen. It's all right to have some time for yourself. But sometimes we can go too far. How many of you all agree with me that we can go too far in having pleasure and seeking uh, uh, happiness and, and all those things that we can take a little too far? Um, the book of Judges talks. Uh, let's take a look at our guy, Samson. Samson is uh, one of those guys who took his uh, leisure time a little too far. Would you guys agree with me that he took a little too far? So he was his job was to judge Israel and to be a vindicator over the Philistines. Amen. So he was supposed to make sure that everything was going well and, and being a judge. And he was supposed to be in charge. But, you know, after 20 years of being in charge, he decided that he wanted to spend some time hanging out. He was just plain old tired, I guess. So he needed something else to do. So I'm not going to give you a lot of scriptures, but I will tell you that it's near chapter 14, verse 1 and 2, that when he started to take some time, he decided what the first problem he saw, he was, but he saw, he had the lust of the eyes. He saw this Philistine woman that he knew that he wasn't supposed to have, but he saw her and she was a good looking woman. So he decided he had to have her. So he made sure that his mother and father was in on the deal. And his mother and father, his father said, can't you find another woman amongst our people that uh, you can you can marry? No, I want that one. You, need, you know, sometimes we can want some stuff that's outside of what God wants for us. Amen. But we can want it anyway. So there's nothing wrong with having good things. But sometimes he says no for a reason. Are you guys with me this morning? So they go ahead and uh, he has the lust of the eyes and that doesn't necessarily turn out well. So he gets married to this woman and so he, they get married and he loses sight of the real goal of being a judge of Israel because he's on his leisure time. Amen. So he's taking his leisure and the leisure is going to cause him a great deal of trouble. So he got what he wanted and uh, it didn't take long. And so he married the woman. And uh, he also, as a Nazarite, he was not supposed to touch any dead thing, nor drink any wine, nor cut his hair. Amen. But he did all those things except for cut his hair. Now, Samson was a was a party guy. Seems like he was having himself a good old time. He lost sight of what he was. So he walks up on the lion one day and he kills the lion. And he walks by another, on another week, a week or two later, and he finds honey's in the lion. And he so, he's, we already know that he's not supposed to eat or touch any dead thing or make sure that he doesn't do any wine. But he gets some honey out of the, the carcass and he makes his parents a privy, a party to his sin. You know, sometimes we can make sure that other people are included in our sin. Amen. And that's not always what we try to do, but sometimes they include it in. Are you guys with me this morning? So he has this vow, and his mother and father, the unbeknownst to them, they take part in his sin. So sin got so good to him, he went over to the other side, and he decided that he was going to give a riddle. He's going to play a little while. He's going to play with these people that he should have been defending Israel from. You know, sometimes you can be a defender of something, but then you could decide you can you you can handle it. So I can handle this. I I I I can be involved in this, and this is okay. So I can be around it, and nothing's gonna happen to me. Now, how many of you guys have said those things to yourself and said nothing's gonna happen to me? And it was quite the contrary. Amen. Amen. It was something whole totally different than what you thought you were getting yourself into. And you wind up busting your head wide open because you thought or we think that we can handle things that God tells us not to do. Amen. So we think we can handle it. So he gives this riddle out. And the riddle 
is what's what is sweet and you know what if the honey and blah 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 and so he does this stuff and so uh, the people can't figure it out and it's been like 20 days 20 25 days and they can't figure it out so you know what they do they go and threaten his wife if you don't tell us we're gonna do dust and so so what does the wife do she has she has given us the she, she becomes very afraid so she asks him the riddle and he tells her and so the people get the answer and 25 days later well you know what happened hey we know the riddle we got the answer so samson has to go out and kill all these people to get all these garments you guys know the story he has to go do something even worse because he's playing his plan has lead has led him to do some stuff just to get these garments as he's promised amen so they fool with his wife. Now he becomes enraged because they mess with his wife. And so he ties the foxtails together and burns up all the crops of the Philistines. And they become even more enraged because he has destroyed their prop property. Amen. He's destroyed their property. Now they're really angry. Why are they so angry? Because he's, he's just don't destroy all their food. So what did they do? They go, see, sometimes our sin will affect our family so bad, it will cause things to happen to them just because of what we do. Not because of what they've done, but because of what we've done and because they're in our environment. So these people decided that they were going to kill his wife and her father. They burned them alive because of what Samson had done to them. There are a lot of times in our life that we're doing things that cause us even more trouble than it was worth doing in the first place. Amen. So just because of a little time off, a little bit of drifting, a little bit of wine, a little bit of partying, it's not going to hurt anybody, but it's, just, it's gotten his whole family killed because he just wanted to have a good time. Amen. What is dying in your life? What has died because you just want to have a good time? How many things have you missed out on because you just wanted to have a good time? I know a lot of times back in when I was a, a young person, uh, particularly in high school, that I wanted to have a good time. So I missed out uh, on, on some schooling that I could have got for free because I wanted to have a good time. So my grades weren't too good on many occasions, so I couldn't go to the college that I wanted to initially. I would have had a free ride, but I missed out on it because I wanted to have a good time. What have you missed out on because you wanted to have a good time? There's a lot of things we can miss out on just because you're tired and you want to have a good time. Amen. Are you guys still with me this morning? Are you with me this morning? Say amen if you are. Amen. Okay. So after that, after that, Samson is still enraged and uh, so he allows himself to be captured. So, you know, sometimes you can be captive in a thing that you don't want to be captive in, you know, and, and, and you get yourself into some things that you don't necessarily want to be there, but it's convenient and you let yourself be captured by it. Amen. And when you get captured by it, you're just kind of comfortable it's okay. Man, yeah, I'm going to stay here a while. I don't mean to stay here, but you know, it's comfortable. You, how many know you can get caught up in stuff that are com comfortable? So Samson allows himself to get captured. Now, I don't know if he had an ulterior motive or not, but he's still mad because they killed his wife. So what he does, he allows himself to get captured, and he winds up killing 1,000 Philistines with the jawbone of a donkey. Now imagine, see, sometimes even the Lord will let you operate in a tight spot. Even when you're in a tight spot and doing wrong, he still will be there for you if you call on him. Amen. So he can still operate in a tight spot. Samson was in a tight spot and he kills 1,000 Philistines. Now imagine, 1,000. That's a lot of people. 1,000 people. He kills them all. That's how enraged he was. He was mad. So what will your anger do? Will your anger kill some of your future? 
Amen. Will your anger kill a future that you have? Because you are still angry at something that happened 10, 5, 3, even a day ago, 5 years ago. Will your anger kill what the Lord has for you? Amen. Excuse me. What would it do for you? Amen. So, he still wasn't done. After he killed the thousands of them, now he's tired. He's famished. He wants some water. So he gets some water. But you know what he does? He goes and finds himself a harlot. You know, a lady of the evening. A, evening, a lady who's going to show him a good time. They tried to trap him at that time, but they couldn't do it. It was to no avail. But he is still partying. You know, how many times do you need to go... Do you, do you need to beat down before, before we change the way we do things? How many beat downs do we need before we say, hey, you know, that's not a good idea. I mean, his wife has been murdered, father has been killed, and, and he's had to kill all these people, and then he's had to, to, to give all these garments, but he still goes back to the party. How many times do you need to get, how many times does the world need to give you a beat down to see that, you know, maybe this is not good for me? Maybe I ought to not be in this spot. Maybe I ought to leave this alone. You know, I had this friend one time. He was about, I don't know, six years old, maybe seven. And uh, he didn't like spankings. And he decided that he was going to run away from home if he got another spanking. Now, he was only about six, but he didn't know that he, was, that he didn't know where he was going. Packed his suitcase. And, and he decided he was leaving because he didn't want another spanking. So either, either his mom was going to quit spanking him or he was going to run away. So consequently, n neither one of those happened. But what happened was he learned that he did not like them and he stopped doing what he was doing. How many times do people stop doing what they're doing when they get a spanking? Some don't. Some repeat the process. They put, what is that? What is that joke? Pete and repeat was in the boat and Pete fell out. And who was in it? Repeat. So we go to it over and over and over again because we don't get it. Amen. So sometimes you just got to be tired of getting the beat down. But obviously Samson was not tired of going getting the beat down. So he decides to go to the other side of the track one more time and he goes bar hopping. And he plays in the devil's backyard. See, we don't always got to be intentionally playing in the back in the backyard of the devil. Sometimes we just kind of creep on over there and we just drift on over just a little bit. And we, for, and next thing you know, we like the river and it's don't carry us a little bit too far. When I was a kid, I used to play in the creek though. And there was, it was a funny thing. There would always be a pocket in the creek. There was just always a stick or a lever just going around in circles. That was, that's what I call stagnation. And when you stagnate many times, Things smell really bad and you just go round and around and around and around in that circle. And it's not a good spot to be in because if you've ever passed by a stagnant uh, pond, it does not smell very good. So being stuck in sin is not a good thing either. Amen. Are you guys with me this morning? I don't know if y'all here with me. So, um, so then he meets a new lady. He gets a new lady. This lady's pretty clever. But I will have to tell y'all this, though. Uh, back in the beginning of the time, Eve was talking to a snake. Y'all remember that? Eve was talking to the snake when she was talking to the serpent. Well, I have to tell you, so was Samson. And her name was Delilah. See, Samson played with a snake, and he got bit by the snake. So we are all, because of Eve in Adam, Adam and Eve's fall, we have been bitten, so, so, so to speak, by the snake, because we did not run away. He did not run away. Delilah was very clever. She was paid lots of money to be his potential lover. Hey, girl, look, we got a lot of money for you. If you can get this guy to do what we want to do, we're going to pay you a lot of money. And by the way, her name means delicate. So she used all her womanly womanly things that she had to use, she used them all. She knew all the tricks. She had painted eyes, you know, and all that stuff, and she smelled good. And, you know, she was able to pull on his heartstrings until he just, she just plain wore it. Poor old Samson now. He was just, whoa, out. So, but here's what she got him to do. She got him to fall in love with her. She had ill intent, but he fell in love with her anyway. 
So she wore him out. And you know what happened next, don't you? Hey, he had to tell her the secret. She just plain wore him out. So let me tell you. Oh, I'm so tired. I've been working, Samson, I've been working 20 years judging this country. I'm tired. And now you're getting on my nerves. I'm just going to tell you my secret. So obviously, he tells her the secret. And he falls, and you know, sometimes when you get comfortable in sin, you fall asleep in it. You you get really relaxed because you've been in it so long. And Samson's been in this sin so long that he falls asleep after he tells her the secret. And she calls for the men to, to, to give, bring her the clippers. And she cuts off all his hair. And poor Samson has now lost all his power. But... Unbeknownst to him, it's gone. And they come in and they take hold of him and they gouge out his eyes. I mean, you just imagine taking somebody just sticking a poker in your eyes and gouging them out. And so he becomes blind. But I have to tell you something, saints, way before you get to the end of the problem, way before the problem comes so bad. Blindness has taken place before you even get there. He was blind before he was blinded. Amen. See, sometimes seeing can blind what we are seeing and we become blind, but we continue to drift on in it anyway. So Samson is blind, not only physically, but he's been blinded spiritually. Amen. So he's been blinded and now he's been taken, taken to prison and he's been taken to prison to grind in the mill for, for the rest of his life. That's his, that's his thing. He's going to have to remember his sin day after day. The last thing that he saw was that woman and she got, they took out his eyeballs and now he's been chained up, pushing in a place that the Lord did not have him set to do. Amen. How many of us wind up in a place that we're not supposed to be in because we made decisions? Amen. But let me tell you, let me tell you about that. The Lord has a way out. Amen. He always provides a way out. If you got yourself into something, if we get ourselves into something, what is the Bible say? He always provides a way of escape. Amen. The Lord has an open door. And the open door is repent. The Lord can restore us back to the top as we've been taught so many years here at the Living River. He can restore us back to the top. All we have to do is call on the name of the Lord and repent and turn from our wicked ways and head back towards him. A lot of times we we don't want to repent because we feel so bad. We feel so ashamed that we, well, how, I've done so bad, Lord God. How, how can I possibly, uh, how can you possibly still love me? Well, the Lord still loves you. He loved you before you came to him. He loves you after you sin, and he still loves you at this point. He still loves me at this point. See, sin can be forgiven. All you got to do is ask. All you got to do is step away. Amen? Just step away from it and, 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 and repent. And it's, pretty, it's a pretty simple thing. Repentance means what? Turn from what you're doing and turn towards him. He can lead us back to himself if we want to be led. Here's one thing I do know. A Christian man or woman who is not worshiping God on a regular basis will have old sinful tendencies show up in their lives and wonder how I got to be this far away from God. In this past two, three, two years here, it's been very easy because it can be a lot easier because we, we have men able to attend church uh, uh, together. Um, and so it's a little bit different. I miss you all. And so it's, it's, it could be easy for some of us to be drifting because, you know, we, 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 uh, we're, while we're watching the word online, we might be cooking breakfast. We might be doing laundry. We might be doing all kinds of other things instead of actually paying attention to a message because, well, we, we're not, we're not necessarily, uh, in the building anymore. So I can do some, I can, what we call multitask while I'm listening to the word. You guys know what I'm talking about. Amen. Are you still with me this morning? I'm hoping that I didn't beat too many people up or including myself because this is derived for somewhat from myself because I find myself in this time not being able to be around you guys. It's a little hard to focus. Amen. It's a little hard to focus. 
And uh, so there's a lot going on. But we can get ourselves back. We can get ourselves back. Here's what I do know. Delilah had power. Samson had power. When we are in Christ Jesus, we have power. The question is, what are you going to do with your power? Amen. Through the blood of Christ Jesus, we have been reborn into power. See, Samson was born with his power. He was born at the top of the food chain. Hey, you know who he's born to God was blessing him right off the bat. But when we receive the blood of Christ, when we receive Jesus as our Savior, we were reborn with new power. Amen. We have this power. What are you going to do with it? What am I going to do with it? I don't have anything else for you this morning. I told you I wasn't going to be very long. I'm hoping that we can get off the place of drifting. If you are, if you're not, amen. God bless you. But sometimes drifting takes place. I hope that uh, this has blessed some of you all and uh, that we can continue to look forward to the day that the Lord has set before us. Amen. I thank you all for joining me this morning. I told you it wasn't going to be very long. If you want to give, you know how to give. And, uh, you know, just do it the regular way you do it. But let's keep our um, our hearts and our minds on our pastors and, and, their, and their family. That we pray that things go well for them. And uh, that the Lord will bless them. And uh, healing will come quickly. Thank you, Father, for this, for this this morning, Lord. We give you the glory and the honor, and I will see you all again soon. Have an awesome day. Goodbye.